we're going. All right, so brand new day in a brand new, not world, but place, location, starting zone. Maybe the game actually starts now? Ooh. Pancakes. 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 Lockpick? <laughs> yeah, you lockpicked that pancake. Uh, surprised that something in my starting room needs to be lockpicked. Ah. Uh, oh, Bianca's ring and a bunch of bread that's probably moldy now. Great. It's just That's just my entire inventory, isn't it? It appears to be. Unfortunately, of course, it is lacking the one good thing I actually had. Which was the weapon! It's all gone now! Shard seems to technically be a higher damage weapon, I guess, but it's pretty garbage. I should probably... ...be somewhat equipped. Maybe it's not the best call. Kunesh's keys. Borderline incriminating thing to have in my inventory at this point in the game, isn't it? Oh, my money. Look, it's my money. You know the money that you need to do things? And where you can wear Bianca's ring. It gives you plus plus two noise. It makes me worse at stealth. I thought it maybe it would help my standing with nobles or something to wear a ring. Maybe. Some of, these, some of these things technically give you more armor, but a lot of it's probably just generally worse off for a lot of reasons, huh? I guess it comes down to whether or not I'm going to be dealing with combat stuff or not. Let's perhaps not bother with uh, straight up wearing a, a bloody jerkin. Let's wear a nice green shirt. That makes me look like a normal ass person, and also makes the cutscenes not look like I'm a crazy person swapping into random characters all the time. Is the patch toes? I'm not wearing pants yet, am I? No. A scarf that gives me one body armor, but otherwise makes me worse at everything. I think. And the tight olive hose. Not a word I'm used to using for describing f clothing, but uh. No, the German word for pants is like hosen. It's not crazy. I don't want to over encumber myself necessarily, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna go with clothes for now. Equip shard just in case. Never know what's coming next. Uh, and my nourishment is poop, right? Yeah, thirty. So let's fix that. Thirty-nine, forty-eight, fifty-seven. That was those things. Let's see. Could grab all my food, but I don't know how reasonable it's going to be to eat. Uh, item info. Freshness 34%, not encouraging. 92%! So despite the fact that it's been weeks, uh, they did not apply the simulation of how much time passed to my actual items in my inventory. Let's eat some stuff that's actually reasonably... Like, food still. Maybe avoid the not healthy stuff, because I think I got a disease from it before. Which is concerning. Let's perhaps, perhaps leave it at that. Alright. So I, sh I should meet her father. Uh, uncle. Sorry. Right, I had the option just to eat from here, didn't I? Oh, I can drop stuff here, too. Really should have been using that, my bad. Maybe I wanted to eat apples. You don't know me. So we are out. Away from town. Oh, yeah. So we're outside the walls. Bit of a change from where we were before, where we grew up. Not, er, yeah, yeah, where we grew up was, was a... An inside the walls kind of spot. This looks like a river community. So we're all along one bank of the river, and if I cross the river, I can get across to the other side of the river. Activity giver here. 
That's Miller Peshek. Let's let's go to the A mark first. My name's Henry. Thank you for taking care of me here. My name's Peshek, and I'm the Miller here. You've already met my niece, Teresa. She took care of you for two whole weeks while you were in limbo. And talking of you being at death's door, while you were lying here, you worked up quite a bill with the blood letter, who came now and again to keep you alive with his potions. That quack doesn't come cheap. I paid him what I could, but I still, that is, you still owe him. I see. Well, it's better to be in debt than to lie dead in a ditch. What do I owe? I'm not afraid of hard work. You won't pay for that shoveling manure. I might have a better job for you. And it's not something any fool can do. If you prove to me you're a clever lad, I might trust you with something you could really make money from. What do you say? Well, what would you need from me? A trifle. Just to take something from someone and bring it to someone else. And not get caught while you're doing it. That sounds straightforward enough. Except for not get caught. Why would anyone want to catch me? Oh, don't worry. It's just a job like any other. Only this one requires, uh... Let's say the right moral disposition. Do corpses bother you? No honourable man should touch them. That's the executioner's job. Did you expect I'd give you a hoe and send you out to the fields? You can dig all right. But somewhere else. I want to know whether you're going to hide behind some stupid fucking scruples, or if you might be useful for more unconventional work. I was prepared for just about anything, but that's a bit much. But go on. Tell me more. Listen, it's about this ring my mate Wojcik, the Kohelnitz Miller, had his eye on. Trouble is, they buried the ring by the gibbet along with the villain they hung while he was wearing it. Jesus Christ. You want me to dig up a corpse, take a ring from it and give it to your friend in Kohelnitz? Is nothing sacred to you? Money first, morals later. That fellow is dead. He won't miss it. Whatever bleeding heart came up with the idea that it's disrespectful to disturb a corpse never read the Bible. It's still a human body, only it's missing a soul. Why be disgusted by something created by God? I'm wondering which way I should go with this with my character. Is he going to be the kind of person that would do that kind of thing or not? I'm not sure. Part of me is just curious what kind of options come out if you don't do it. Hmm. I'm a bit- I'm a bit curious what your options might be if you don't do it, because otherwise, like, what the hell do I do to pay him off? That was a pretty speech, but you're still talking about a filthy deed. I won't do it. I value my honor higher than coin. I gave you a chance to work off your debt. Don't think you can wriggle out of it. I want my Groshen back. And quick. Otherwise, I'll make your life hell. Believe me. Can you tell me... What about the Scalets, folk? God sent them to punish us for our sins. They don't work, they just idle around begging. And you want to keep a close eye on your belongings when they're around. I'll be glad to see the back of them. What do you think about everything that's happened? I don't concern myself with the doings of my betters. But this mess isn't good for business. Them two brothers should sort things out between themselves without dragging us into it. I don't give a damn who's king, but that usurper from Hungary has gone too far. Do you know anything about those Cumans? The heathen scum that Sigismund brought here. Why do you even ask? You've seen with your own two eyes what they're capable of. That's all. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. For this character, it might, it might be a little early to just 
immediately accept digging up graves to rob jewelry off the body to sell to another person? I'm not sure. At the very least, it seems like it makes sense to at least look into whether other options exist around here before I go straight into accepting the easiest solution for this for the issue, I guess. So he has a job for me. I could check as an activity giver. Maybe he could make some money for me. What bothers me is that his dialogue went away. Or at least, or there was like a can't I just pay you option that was there. And what's weird is I, as far as I can tell, there's just no dialogue I can bring up for that guy that actually tells me like what he wants from me, like how much money I owe him. As far as I can tell, he just won't tell me. Which you'd think would be like the first thing he'd want to tell me is how much money I owe him. And that we're supposed to get my father's sword back. <laughs> you should pay Miller uh, Peshek the debt for the treatment. Optional. Ah, Miller Peshek paid the apothecary 50 groschen to treat me while I was unconscious. He wants me to pay the debt off for do it by doing him a service. And he keeps offering you a shady job. Well, maybe I can find a different solution for said shady job. Maybe down there. Is there a marker there or not? There it is. Tried placing him, but seemed to not show up at first. Like a light rain. I realized I was uh, taking stuff off of bodies. Although, two different, two things. One, that w that's not canon anymore to an extent because I, I had to replay that stuff and did actually didn't do that uh, the second time around. Just aside from like a couple bodies, mainly for the the raiders items but also that was like a crisis situation where like your character my character's literally like has to worry about nourishment and survival things whereas here i'm like in town and i'm doing it for money and so i think there's a bit of a difference between survival and personal gain but also w once they're literally buried and everything it's also like a whole other barrier that's further than just like picking something up wait oh ah you're the guy I'm like, how did, how did I lose the prompt? My respects to you. About Ratei. Oh, I, I can ask about the town. What kind of governor is Sir Hanush? Sir Hanush is a good lord. Things won't be the same when that wastrel Sir Hans takes over. That will be a sorry day. What's life like in Ratai? We got sturdy walls and two castles to protect us. There's not many towns of that, and we got everything we need here. We got an apothecary, a swordsmith, an armorer. We got a beautiful church and a fine alehouses. How do the Ratai folk get on with the refugees? Well, they have it tough, no doubt, but there's not enough room for them here. How much longer will they be living on our streets? Nothing good will come of this. What if one of them's brought the plague with them? Have you heard anything about the Cumans in Sigismund's army? Don't talk to me about that fucking rabble. A soldier was saying in the alehouse them barbarians impale people on spikes, rape women. They hold nothing sacred, the filthy heathens. Are you the brawler who takes bets? What's it to you? Well, I'm a Scalitz refugee and I'd like to try my luck against you. Hang on, I know who you are. And I'll only fight you for silver, got it? Why for silver? Do I really have to tell you? Look at yourself, and then look at the others. All they've got to wager is their labor, but you, you've got coin. Are there any rules? Aye, a couple. Whoever lands on his arse or runs, loses. And no knives, axes, or any of that shit. You'll forfeit your wager for that, got it? How far is running? Because I do back away a lot because it seems to help with the whole stamina problem. All right, let's fight then, if you think you can take me. Hold your horses, laddie. First, you have to prove you're a worthy opponent for me by beating two other regular brawlers, Stephen and a fellow they call Ringlet. All right. A bit more honest work than the grave robbing part, right? Or so I'll tell myself. I keep- I can- I never remember which one's the inventory screen and which one's the- the map. 
So that's Milan. That's Steven. And Ringlet. So they're both in town. And then all the way in there is Sir Radzig, which... <clears throat> I don't know when I, I don't know how sh how soon I should see him. Seems like I can go straight up the side of this hill from here. One thing. There we go. Wanted to increase it a little bit. On one hand, definitely walking around in first person works a little better in, on a on keyboard and mouse, but I think the combat and stuff like that, I, I think I might lose my mind if I tried to keyboard and mouse that stuff. It just feels kind of natural with the one stick being moving, one stick being like the change the attack angle thing while you're pressing the bumpers and everything. Well, everyone disagrees on that stuff though, because it's always a matter of like what people have just spent all their time with. There's lunatics out there that are like, yeah, you, I play Dark Souls with keyboard and mouse. I'm like, are you, are you human? Are you real? Are you sure? Halt! Who are you and where are you going? I'm Henry, son of the Scalitz blacksmith. I'm going to see my liege, Sir Radzig Kabila of Dvoyets. Of course you are, lad, and I'm the Pope. What do you want from his lordship and what makes you think he'll see you? Wow, I've really diminished my uh, outward appearance, haven't I? Welp. Come on, I'm not some peasant. I'm Sir Radzig's blacksmith and I need to speak with him. It's my job to stop you. Now bugger off. I may not look the part, but I know about honor and duty. And mine is to tell Sir Radzig what happened to the sword he commissioned. All right then, go ahead. It'll be your skin if Sir Radzig isn't pleased. A bit surprised how much you're allowed to sort of just change paths. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you seem to be able to just change and try their appearances and stuff like that. Uh, speech is three. Any of these, things, any of these things affect taking off these pants increases my charisma. Oh. Taking off the green shirt increases my charisma. It appears I should walk around kind of naked-ish, huh? Oh, take off the red scarf and now I've got six charisma. Is that... Do I, is that me wearing clothes? Apparently I just got really... Oh yeah, they've all got a poopy splotch on them, don't they? That's what it is. Each of them has... that. There's a dark spot on each of them on the icons in the left side of the screen. Which I believe means that they're all poopy, and that yeah, they collectively have a negatively, negative impact on like what must be like the cap for how high my charisma can be. I suppose. Am I naked right now? Like, does this does this count as indecent or is this normal? I don't know what to expect about how clothes work in this game. They just got food sitting around. Don't know if I'd get away with that. Welcome to camp. I need to figure out how to get myself some nice clothes or something so I can look okay when necessary if that's going to be an approach that I take in this game. I'm definitely going to soil my remaining clothes if I start doing those fights, which I might. I uh, imagine that there's not a time element to worry about right now because I've been unconscious for weeks, haven't I? It'd be slightly weird if there was suddenly like a major time limit to deal with here. A lot of people praying or are they begging? I think these people are all begging. Who is C? Are you C? Steven. They see me loading for a weirdly long time. Huh. I don't think I've ever seen a game like this where that has like a thing where it has to load every conversation before you can do them. I wonder what's going on with like how it handles data that this Ow. is weirdly necessary. What are you doing here? I took you for dead. Oh, it's a long story. But what about you? How did you get out of Scalitz? You wouldn't believe it. 
A frightful storm broke that night, and Sigismund's heathens ran back to their camp. They never dreamed Sarazzi would use the storm as cover for our escape. The entire village slipped away as quiet as mice while no one watched. In the morning, when those bandits attacked, all they found was an empty castle with an old goat inside. I wish I could have seen their faces. So do I. You trick them nicely. See you later. All right, we're staring at, staring at the floor. That was weird. His name is Steven. Supposed to beat Steven, yeah. Hey, you. Jesus Christ be praised. How does life in Ratai suit you? And them Ratai folk would rather drive us out of here. They won't give us no work, and they won't let us beg. So what are we supposed to do? Fucking war. Did you find out what actually happened? They say Sigismund is at war with the Czech lords and abducted the king. And our lord sides with Wenceslas. You're Stephen, aren't you? Milan tells me he won't fight me until I beat you. Oh, yeah? And why would you want to? Well, never mind. I'll fight you if you pay me. What do you say? Yeah, forget it. That's a swindle. What? Weird conversation happened there. The first conversation is like we're it was like we're old friends that know each other. The next conversation he was like, "You're Steven, right?" I'm like, "What?" And then he auto rejected the fight. What? Let's fight. Have you got coin? I already told you I won't fight for the fun of it. Yeah, forget it. That's a swindle. Okay. How much coin do I need? Apparently I need some invisible amount of coin that he's not saying. But I must not have enough for? That must be why it's not happening? I have 4.1, which is not a lot. And I'm not sure if I really have much to sell either. I could try it. Is this where the pressure comes on where somebody might be tempted to sell off Bianca's ring? Because it might be the most it might, it might be the most valuable thing in their entire inventory. Help your neighbor. You can't deal with all these begging people right now because I am in the same boat at the moment. Don't really have much to me. Maybe the other guy will duel me, but if I I think I had to beat both of them, right? I'm not really sure what the requirement might be. Is it this guy? Ringlet. I wonder, is he- day to you? Is he telling me to duel two people that are both refugees? How does life in Ratai suit you? I suppose it was kind of them to take us in. But then they just left us to fend for ourselves. Nobody gives a damn about us. Did you find out what actually happened? Folks say it was on account of our silver and how Sir Radzik sides with the king. Aren't you Ringler? Milan says I have to beat you before he'll take me on. And you're that blacksmith's lad, right? What do you want out of it? You're not living in the dirt here like the rest of us. Maybe not. But why shouldn't I try and beat some coin out of him too? Yeah, and you can pass it on to us that need it. If you want to fight me, you dandy, then pay up, or fuck off. I want nothing from you. Okay, so neither of them will even fight me unless I pay them first, but the entire gambit here is for me to try to make money in the first place, so... This is kind of a wash at the moment, isn't it? Maybe it'll help out in a different context, but at the moment it's just a big ol' waste for me. I suppose I should try to head over there then. I have nothing else locally that's standing out that I know about. Is that my fast travel range? I think it might be. Let's learn about this a little bit. Can I click on you from here? Oh, that's neat. <laughs> you actually physically path to that location kind of a neat way of doing it. I didn't really mean to go back outside, but okay. 
Will they let me in? Maybe it'll be one of those, like, club moments where the guy in that's inside notices me and, and it's like, Oh yeah, let him in. Could that be the Smith's son, Hal? On my soul. It is him. What are you doing here, lad? We thought you were done for. I'm gonna speak with Sir Radzik. Is he here? He's in the palace with Sir Hanush of Ratai. They're feasting in the Knights Hall. What do you want with him? My father made him a sword. He, um... He asked me to deliver it to Sir Radzik. I don't see any sword. No. Bandits attacked me and stole it. I need to tell his lordship what happened. And then I'm gonna find the sword. Of course you are, Hal. Good luck. Thanks. It's strange to me, like, every time the camera changes, it seems like it dumps all the textures, and it has to reload all the textures again. So you get texture pop over and over again in the same conversation on the same person's face, which is weird. I remember lots of texture pop in, like, Halo 2 and Mass Effect 1, but not... It was always at the beginning of a scene, not, like, over and over again throughout the scene. That's wholly, like, new for me. Oh, that's lockpicking. That's not opening a door. Awkward. Do I need to talk to you? The, the waypoint's really fixed in place when I look at this guy. Is he just, like, I don't know. I guess I'll look around. That's a very public chamber pot, isn't it? I don't think that's him. Um, that's a lockpick spot. I must be in the wrong spot. I said they were eating. Is it this doorway? Okay. Your graces, I have to tell you in all seriousness, that this land of ours is in the shit. Deep fucking shit. Don't you agree? I might not have put it as eloquently as you, Hanush, but I've been driven out of my own castle, so I'm hardly going to disagree. Indeed. But Pirkstein is yours for as long as you need it. There's room enough for your men and you here at Ratte, and I'm sure my ward won't have any objection to me lending you his castle. I'd be honoured. Perkstein is at your disposal as long as you wish, Your Grace. Just as well you have another castle at the other end of town, eh? <laughs> ah, at any rate, I'm beholden to you, Sir Hans, and to you, Sir Hanosh. Mm. I don't like to speak ill of your people, Sir Radzik, but, well... There's no love lost between the townsfolk and the refugees. There's been talk of criminality. No, they'll have to get used to it until the situation's resolved. But when will it be resolved? And what on God's earth is this war even about? I won't lie, sir. I don't understand it. You aren't alone, father. I believe Sigismund's original intention was to persuade Wenceslas to accept the imperial crown and to leave the rule of Bohemia to him. Who could blame him? I know Wenceslas is a friend of yours, Radzig, but even you have to admit he brought it upon himself. I can't deny the king neglected affairs of state for other pursuits. There is a need for order in the land, but I don't think the lords who sided with Sigismund realize just what Hungarian order looks like. <laughs> Hungarian order? <laughs> What concerns me, sir, is how a good Christian could resort to such brutality. To give him his due, I don't think he expected the lords of this country to stand behind the king. But thanks to him, we're tearing ourselves apart, and now he has to get things under control. But why in God's name does he have to use those barbarians? Money is the root of all evil, young sir. Wars are costly, and this one has dragged on for a year. Sigismund ran out of coin for knights, 
So he recruited those whore sons that settled in Hungary. The less he pays, the more they make up for it with plunder. That's why he attacked us. He was after our silver. What are you doing? You've no business here. Clear off. Wait, it's Henry. Henry, who disappeared after I clearly ordered him to remain at Taunberg. I'm sorry, sir, but I had to bury my parents. Had to? Do you think you were the only man who lost someone there? But the others listened to their lord. And it wasn't just your own life you nearly threw away. So Robard and his men risked theirs to save you. I'm sorry, but I had to. No, oh, there you go. When you have to, you have to, Radzik. <laughs> your father was a remarkable man. And your mother, she was remarkable too. They deserved a Christian burial. Did you manage that at least? No. I was attacked by thieves. I wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for that girl. Girl? The miller's daughter, Teresa. <laughs> the miller's daughter saved you from the footpads? Well, there's a tale to tell your children. Uh, I owe my life. She distracted them and then brought me to Ratai. But without Sir Robard, we'd both be dead. Oh, well, that's what I call a good woman. Hang on to that one, lad. Still, it's a great shame your parents are buried in unconsecrated ground. That means purgatory for them. Be quiet, friar. I didn't invite you here to eat me out of house and home and deliver a sermon while you were doing it. If you're so concerned, Father, maybe you should save the innocent souls of these fine Christians yourself. Go to Scalitz and consecrate their graves. I assure you, if you're killed by bandits, your soul will soar straight to heaven, as long as someone buries you in consecrated ground first. If there's anything left to bury, that plump carcass of yours would be quite a feast for the wolves and the crows. And one skeleton looks much like another, so how would we know which were your ordained bones or those of Sigismund's Tartars? Be that as it may, why have you come here? I must get your sword back. Sword? My sword hangs here at my side. No, the sword my father forged for you. One of those thieves stole it from me. They almost killed him and he already wants to go back. Takes after his father, I suppose. Lad. I've lost a castle, a village, silver mines, and a good half of my subjects. Why would I miss one sword? Because it's the last one my father forged, and I promised him I'd deliver it to you. I understand. I'd feel the same way. But prudence is the better part of valour, and a dead man keeps no promises. Aye. A woman had to save his fat from the fire, and now he wants revenge. What kind of fool are you, boy? He's no fool. Henry, you have courage. But you need training, arms, a horse. Or do you mean to beat this thief at dice? No, sir. Please, take me into your service and give me the chance to learn these things. The gall of him. Fled from the enemy, disobeyed your orders, duped Sir Divish, lost your sword, put Sir Robard in danger with his actions, and now he wants a promotion. Sir Capon's right. What you say is certainly true, except for fleeing the enemy. You would have run as well, believe me. Henry's earned some punishment, but how do you punish someone who's already lost everything, hmm? Courage and blind obedience are good qualities for a soldier, but a wise man also appreciates loyalty, perseverance, and determination. Besides, that was a fine sword that his father made. If he thinks he can get it back, I won't turn it down. My lord, he's a peasant. You can't make a squire of a peasant. Why not? Someone made a priest of a pig. He isn't a peasant, father. He's a blacksmith. And recent events have left me in need of his skills. So, you'd like to enter my service? So, I... Yes, I would. You won't regret it. <laughs> oh, I probably will. I'm doing this for your father, lad. Don't disappoint me. Oh, fortune has finally smiled on you today, lad. Make the most of it. Now that I think about it, Sir Hanush, the boy needs training and experience, and you need spear carriers. Hmm. That's true. The bailiff is always complaining about your people making trouble in the camp. Maybe one of their own among the guard might help. It might. In any event, it will prove valuable experience. <laughs> but let's be clear, you're the one paying him. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Bernard, see to his training. 
and then send him to the bailiff. Yes, sir. And don't spare him. You can rely on it, sir. Don't forget, Henry. Don't disappoint me. I won't, my lord. All right. Radzik seems all right after all. I wasn't sure what to think of him, and we, he, we saw him in such short bursts that, that that was like his longest scene so far, I think. They do a decent job characterizing some of these people, and generally the dialogue is actually pretty all right. There's some, there's been some scenes where I'm like, okay, that di both the dialogue and that actual, like both the writing and the actual recording of the dialogue was a little kind of iffy in a few spots, but this like more mandatory stuff's actually going better. We're supposed to go training at the training ground, which is somewhere. All the way down there. What do the stars mean? A quest tipster. What does a what is a tipster? Well, I know what a tipster is. I'm just curious what exactly to make of it in this game. More more interested in, in particular of like what was what will the tipster mean in terms of cost to me to get said tipped? Or do they, or they just come out and just throw stuff at you? And throw that at them coming out. Whoa! Yeah, when you pause this game, sometimes people like jump around and start flying in the air and stuff. Then they don't acknowledge it, which is the real trip. Is it this guy? Could be. The Trader's Tavern. He's the- oh, he's the innkeeper. Good day to you. Do you know if there's anyone around here who could use my help? Could be. Berthold, our local gamekeeper, was looking for help with something a while back. Why don't you ask him if he still needs help? Do you know if there's anyone around? Hmm. I don't know. Seems it caps out. But it is a repeatable dialogue, so if they do have more than one, they'll give you another one. Oh, quest giver. It's probably the gamekeeper. I'm gonna head over to the training grounds though, because I'm a little worried that I might like take too long if I don't head over there. Am I getting into some sort of trouble? Is this the right way? Yeah. Excuse me. 